today I'm doing one of my favorite things uh, with my work and that is I'm having lunch with a client. He's been a client for over 20 years. He lives here on the Gold Coast in Australia and uh, we're going to have lunch. We're going to share lots of uh, talk about the charts and uh, I thought I'd share some of that uh, with you. So let's take a look at what we've been talking about. So we had a really great session and um, I mean it was mostly a social lunch just talking about everything that's going on in the world and inevitably a lot of the conversation was about the macro and the fundamentals and everything that's happening in the Middle East and um, just uh, that is always the easy stuff to talk about and I didn't take my computer and sit there at lunch and go through the charts but we did talk about a lot of charts and a lot of different um, materials and uh, especially commodities because Australia very commodities focused and so I just thought I'd um, share that conversation route through the charts so uh, the, the first thing we just talked about was you know what's going on in the world what do we think about the dollar we started with currencies and you know it was really interesting just seeing that the dollar has been really falling away we know that in Australia because the Australian dollar has been rising quite sharply against the weaker uh, American dollar, and we see this fall away that we saw last week really massive um, on the spectre of interest rates having reached their peak in the US, and now the market is looking for rate cuts. And that uh, then you know, led through to what's going on with the Australian dollar, um, and here we see. Um, we've got this upside target, some 5% higher, back to 70. Um, so, you know, for Australians, that's really significant. The currency strengthening against that uh, weaker dollar. We talked about bond yields and bond markets, you know, what's going on with interest rates and, you know, what that means for the broader picture in Australia, um, people with homes, etc. And, you know, what would it mean in 2024? And we can see here how the uh, US bond yields fallen all the way back from 5% below four percent in a matter of six weeks so really very dramatic move there and if we look at the uh, Australian bond yields a uh, similar picture of course we've we've pulled back um, found some support at around four percent 4.07 and now we've got an upside target to 4.23 on the uh, 10 year Aussie bond yield so you know bond markets no doubt long term still in turmoil having broken a 40 year trend but uh, really have pulled back from the, the peaks that we've seen and of course the key thing is uh, is inflation debt that's the the big question and something uh, you know we all want to really know and if we look at uh, the long term bond yield chart there is still a target to 10 percent um, out in 2029 I might add um, so you know will inflation go away or will we come back and see bond yields going even higher in the next two or three years and uh, that's the big question of course but for the moment uh, we are bearish and neutral and uh, below the cloud short term so bond yields are actually falling away um, you know quite dramatically um, just looking at what else is going on in the world uh, we talked about stock indices, of course, uh, the NASDAQ. The big question in 2024 was, you know, could we see tech stocks going even higher? Um, and, you know, the NASDAQ making that new high there. Not an all-time high. If we look at the long-term chart, we're still below the peak that we set in 2021, but a very big long-term target, which we have diverged from, but we are above the cloud on the weekly the daily and the 60 minute. The targets met here on the 60 minute faster than that was predicted. Uh, so really quite key there. And of course, making new highs. So that is still looking pretty strong. Um, and we'll take a look at some of the NASDAQ stocks, which we talked about as well. Uh, the Aussie market, of course, being in Oz, we wanted to talk about the Aussie market and quite an incredible run from you know 6,700 on the all ordinaries to 7,500 in a matter of six weeks. And again, these upside targets, you just can't ignore the targets. Uh, he's a big fan of the targets. Uh, a lot more people using these targets. You just can't ignore the fact that the, the targets were given and that's that's where we've got to. The targets are not, no longer in bold because they've been met. Um, so they're achieved targets. Um, and just looking at some of the other things, uh, just talking uh, the markets, you know, we talked about tech. Interesting that Apple uh, just cannot make above that $200 mark. Uh, just hitting that resistance that we've seen before. 
Uh, the downside targets for Apple have been taken off the chart, but we do still have the short-term upside target, but a new mini downside target. So it'll be very interesting to see whether we can get above that $200 mark and hold it. Uh, and if we look at something like Tesla, we talked a lot about um, electric vehicles and you know just general conversation over lunch. You know, would, the, would these things take off? You know, um, and it was really interesting. In fact, we talked about the lithium price. Um, and if you look at the lithium price, you know, this has been big news in Australia because because Australia is one of the largest lithium producers in the world. We see this massive rise that we saw in 2021 from $15 uh, to $80, and then we've dropped away. Um, so really significant there that we fell right the way back. So um, really quite key there. And, you know, that's that's the big thing for Tesla. I mean, you know, as a, as a manufacturer, uh, lithium is, is effectively a lot cheaper than it was. Um, and is that going to help them? Um, you know, will this drive towards electric vehicles just continue? Um, and there are lots of issues coming along, like the cost of replacing batteries, etc. Uh, and in Australia, you know, driving long distances is still uh, potentially quite a big issue. And anyone who's involved in agricultural side of the economy um, is finds it hard to uh, to look at the uh, electric vehicle market going forward. Um, and then we uh, we talked a little bit about natural resources, um, talked about crude oil. That's, of course, jumping at the moment with what's going on in the Suez Canal. We were bullish uh, the last few days on crude oil, just uh, pointing out that we had targets on the short-term charts pushing higher. We still do have these downside targets medium term on crude oil, but we have recovered back to 79.50 was the, the point we reached. So we are just seeing some um, some strength there. It's really quite interesting as well. Uh, and then we looked at a lot of the metals because in Australia, if you're an investor, you know, resources stocks are really key. And we looked at things like copper um, and just, just talked about the copper price. It's been pretty depressed over the last uh, year. But interestingly, we've got this new upside target. Uh, so starting to look a little bit stronger again and again, bullish on the short term. Uh, we talked about um, nickel. Uh, just some of these metals have been really heavily sold off. Uh, we see that there with nickel. We look at zinc on the medium term chart looking a lot better than nickel. Uh, and in fact, we both have a coincidentally have a holding that would be affected by the um, zinc price. And um, it, we're just waiting really for this upside target to be activated on the short term chart. That's that's the target that we're sort of moving to. So really quite interesting there. Uh, and looking at cobalt, another metal, um, not much of a chart there because it's not traded that heavily, um, but really quite interesting just looking at the charts. Uh, and if we look down at gold, um, a really big theme for the year. Um, gold uh, looking very, very strong indeed, and um, now holding this 2000 level quite convincingly. Um, and really, again, for Australian investors, a lot of Aussie gold stocks, and uh, it's going to be something that a lot of people are going to be watching. One of the big calls for 2024 really is that now the gold has broken 2000, making new all time highs. Um, where do we go next for the targets? And these long-term targets, this this target to 3,600 is, you know, that, that's pointing to the end of 2026. So we need to be aware that that is a good three years away, that sort of target. But the reality is um, gold is now looking very strong, both on the short term and on the longer term charts. And the other precious metals, uh, not so much looking at silver, not looking as strong as gold and platinum uh, hasn't had a great time, but now starting to follow the train tracks on the short term. And we did talk about catalytic converters and palladium. And this has been pretty much a disaster going down to the down targets, but just recovering now back above the top of the price, not yet on the lagging line, but starting to look a little bit more interesting there as well. And then just looking at some of the um, uh, agricultural crops, because again, you can't really be an Australian investor and not really be thinking about that. And we're seeing here uh, wheat, um, oats, corn, all having had pretty tough years and just starting to look a little bit better um, as well. So that's it for today. I just thought I'd share that lunch conversation with you and some of the charts we talked about. I wish I'd actually spent more time looking at the charts ahead of the lunch because I'm pretty useless unless I have the chart in my head. But it was a great time and we really enjoyed just chatting through markets um, and hopefully find that valuable just to share it with you. Until tomorrow, bye for now.